my sleep has been all out of whack since getting here, but um, have a little bit more of a restful day today. Not in half a mile, play. keep left. Probably not gonna play, just gonna um, do some work, hang out. Just gonna go get some food. I was feeling a little out of it, but now I'm pretty pumped. Gonna get some vermicelli noodles uh, from a place that's rated really high on Yelp, uh, Sipfa. I don't know if you, anybody in the Austin area has been there, but I have high hopes, very high hopes indeed. Welcome back to the vlog that just never seems to quite die. Putters along, but it never quite goes away. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, if you guys have been sticking around, you know that this is a very, very old video, uh, but one that I still wanted to share. So let's get right into it. This is a $600 tournament flight. Uh, one of the final flights that they offered, although technically I had a couple more shots at it if need be. Sitting right down, I got immediately involved. Lines are 100, 200, 200. 40k starting stack is in my hand here in my stack and it's my literal first hand sitting down middle position opens it up to 600 and i'm in the hijack with ace jack suited uh this is certainly a spot where i could three bet but it's you know i've literally just like gotten my bag sort of settled i'm just barely getting sat in the chair and I just decided to flick in the call. Naturally, the cutoff behind me ends up three betting to 2K, folds around to me, and I think once I just call this hand, it's easily good enough to call again. I do make the call. Flop comes out, queen, eight, three, one spade and two clubs. I check the opponent's C bets 2K, and while I don't really have anything yet, most three bet ranges should include some bluffs that I'm way ahead of. I do have a couple of backdoor draws going on, although for sure, it's, this is precarious. I can sort of make a pair and not have the best hand. I can turn a backdoor draw that gives my opponent a good hand. So yeah, it's it's not the best spot in the world, but I do decide to call and see what happens on the turn. The turn is the Jack of Clubs, one of these cards that can uh, kind of uh, put me in a weird spot. It brings in a flush, but I make a pair. So when I check and my opponent bet 6K, I definitely don't think we can fold now. I definitely didn't call the flop to fold on this card. So I flick in the call. River is the queen of clubs. So fourth club on board, and it's also pairing the top card. So we're now looking at the possibility of boats and quads technically, although should be pretty uncommon. I check and my opponent checks it back, which will usually mean that I'm gonna have the best hand here a lot, beat hands like ace king that just give up, that don't have a club. But unfortunately, I end up losing to 10-9 of spades. So uh, correct call on the flop, incorrect call on the turn, at least relative to their exact hand. I definitely think that this spot is tricky and probably would have been resolved a little more easily just by three betting myself pre. In this next hand, blinds have now gone up to 200, 300, 300. I didn't come in right at the start of the day, uh, so it's not that weird that blinds are already up, but I've probably just also been card dead as well. 24K in my stack now, I've been chipping down and under the gun opens it up to 700. I'm in middle position with ace queen of clubs and I decide not to make the same mistake twice. I three bet to 2K here, trying to isolate, get value from worse ace x. The low jack cold calls, totally thwarts my isolation plans. Under the gun calls as well, so at least that part's going to plan. The flop comes king, king, queen. So we do flop second pair, but not in love with it as a lot of Broadway hands would continue here from probably either spot that we're up against. Hands like king jack suited, king 10 suited, maybe even king nine suited are in there. Ace king could be in the cold colors range, king queen. It's not a fun spot, so when it's checked to me, I decide to check it as well, and the low jack now stabs 2K. Fold, and then it's on me. Definitely can't fold just yet. I think that pocket pairs could bet once, sort of trying to figure out where they're at or get protection. There's also a flush draw available. I just, it's way too weak to fold this hand this good this early. So I make the call. Turn is the eight of diamonds. I check and my opponent now bets 7K. Here's where I could realistically consider folding. He's now no longer representing any pocket pairs that I'm beating. He's no longer really representing anything worse than a king. Some flush draws are still pretty logical bluffs. I don't expect the eight to connect with them too often. So it's not like they'll, you know, hit and then slow down with a bluff. So I decide to put in one more call, uh, make it a game of fifth street chicken, as Bart Hansen likes to say, and, and see if my opponent will uh, pull the trigger on the river. The river does come the seven of clubs, which is uh, fairly brickish. I don't really think sevens is in range. So at this point, feeling pretty good about this card. I put in the check, hoping that they'll just check it back, which they do. And um, by the rules of most tournaments, I have to show first, so I do. And it turns out that my hand is in fact good. So can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief here as I finally 
definitely pick up uh, a few chips here. 200, 400, 400 blinds now. So again, we are going fast and furious through these blind levels. Keep in mind that this is a uh, 30 minute levels on day one. Day two will be 40 minute levels, but for day one, things are moving pretty fast. Not that crazy to go a whole blind level without really playing a significant pot. But in this hand, 35K in the stack, middle position and opens up to 1.5K. And the cutoff, who's a crazy guy is from like the very first hand, uh, so he's getting really getting after it, makes the call. I'm on the button with black pocket fives and I make the call as well. Happy to set mine here. We go three ways to a flop of Jack, 10, Deuce, Two Tone. Checks to me and I'll have a lot of better hands to stab with. Um, even if I had like the five of hearts in my hand, it would be a little bit better because then I would be drawing to a, a very clean set out most likely. Um, but without the five of hearts in my hand, that's a little bit less true. I decided to just check this back. Maybe there'll be opportunities to bluff on later streets. Um, maybe I'll just get to navigate to showdown. However, the turn is the five of hearts. So uh, pretty much exemplifying exactly what we were just talking about here. Um, third heart on board. But given that I've checked back, this card is much more clean of an out just because I haven't really narrowed people's ranges who, you know, be heart centric in any sort of way. So when middle position checks and cutoff makes it 2K, I think we can absolutely raise for value. There's a lot of Jack X, 10 X that could play this way and probably won't release to a single raise here and a plenty, just an absolute plethora of single heart holdings as well. I bump it up to 6.5 K middle position, the opener folds and the cutoff calls. River is the eight of diamonds. And while this does bring in queen nine, maybe a hand like nine, seven suited, uh, once he checks, I think that we just have too strong of a hand here. Um, first of all, he's shown himself to be pretty willing to kind of like get after it. Um, and I think that ultimately we're going to be able to just get him to call with a bunch of worse holdings. Once he's called the raise, I think that he's a bit stronger. So I just stuff it in for his 15.5 K effective. Uh, and he essentially snap calls and he shows eight deuce offsuit. Like it's just this absolute stone cold nuts. So bottom pair flop that checks through. He stabs turn and then calls a raise with the eight of hearts in hand and then rivers to pair. Doesn't really think I have better than a jack, I guess, which is pretty sick because I I don't think I play a jack like this all that much. I do have some bluffs, of course, um, that can play this way. But yeah, very feeling very fortunate on that run out since I think if there's no eight on the river, he probably he probably just folds. But yeah. Uh, pretty fortunate run out there, turning the set, him rivering two pair, and we're now well above starting stack. In this next hand, the blinds are up to 300, 600, 600. I don't believe that there was a big blind 500 level. So uh, here we are with 60K in the stack. Middle position and hijack limp. I'm in the cutoff with aces and happily bump it up to 2.1K. The button cold calls and the big blind makes it 11K with 25K behind and it folds around to me. I think we could certainly just stuff this in. Uh, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. The opponent is really saying that they have a hand that they're gonna go with. But I also like sometimes mixing in flats here in these sorts of spots. It allows me to have some other slightly weaker flats as well if I want to, but I do think jamming here would be the standard play. I end up just calling and the flop comes queen nine, seven, two tone. He absolutely turbo snap jams. And I, of course, snap call. We're up against ace king, which is really nice to see. You kind of assume he's going to have like king queen, queen jack suited, ace queen, which I mean, ace queen's in pretty bad shape as well, but ace king in virtually the worst shape possible. Uh, he doesn't even have a heart in his hand. Turn is the jack of diamonds and suddenly his hand doesn't seem so dead anymore. River is the queen of hearts. So uh, we have fade disaster here and are up now to above 2x starting stack. So really fun spot to be in here early on in this tournament. Next hand, blinds are up to 400, 800, 800. It's kind of wild that I'm really getting pretty consistently like one interesting hand per level, but that's how it goes sometimes. 90K in the stack, hijack limps. I'm in the button with queen 10 off and bump it up to 3K. Don't mind this, but uh, definitely depends on how the hijack's tendencies are. If they're limping a ton of stuff, this is good. If they're limping a kind of tight range, it might be a little bit less good. Small bind ends up calling and the hijack limper calls as well. So when the flop comes king eight four rainbow and it checks to me, we have a pretty clear range advantage and I think that we can see bet if not range uh, at least a lot of the hands that interact well with this board so blocking king queen blocking king 10 having some backdoor stuff going on in the form of backdoor straight draws i decided to see bet 2.8k which is small I, I think appropriate given that we're multi-way small blind puts in the call 
Uh, makes a lot of sense. His range is a little more Broadway centric and pair centric. Hijack folds. We're heads up to a turn, which is the Jack of Clubs. Small blind checks, and I have the option here. I could certainly check back saying, okay, I don't think his range is gonna fold too often. He has a lot of strong King X holdings, but I'm also blocking a lot of his better King X holdings. Um, and or they're blocked by the board, like King Jack, King Queen, King 10 are all blocked. And he has a lot of pocket pairs in range as well. Some 8X in the form of suited connectors, Ace-8, things like that. The stack size is pretty well set up for me to bet a lot bigger here and then set up a river jam. So I decided to go for it here, put in the aggressive action. I bet 11K, which would set up the potential for a 35 to 40K river jam. But he just folds here and now, which is uh, pretty great. It's going to, I think that's going to be what's going to happen quite a bit of the time, but it's always nice when it does uh, set up this river jam and just kind of get it through now. Technically, we might have made more chips if you'd called here and I had pulled the trigger, but it's a little more nerve wracking that way. So happy to scoop this one in. And in this next blind level, we actually have our uh, a buddy of ours and friend of the vlog, Brendan, with us at our table. And there's 110K in my stack now, still over 100 big blinds, which is pretty impressive at this point. We're in level like six or whatever. So uh, Brendan opens it up from middle position to 2.5K. Hijack calls and I'm on the button with King 10 of spades. I put in the call as well. Small blind also comes along just through a call. So we end up four ways to a flop of 10, four, three rainbow. Top pair, great kicker for me. Small blind leads for 3K though, which is not the most comfortable spot in the world. Brennan folds and now the hijack calls. I think that this pot is getting quite bloated and raise might fold out a lot of the hands that I'm beating. Then again, it's Texas, so a raise probably would do okay here. I'm very conflicted, but end up making the call. Turn is the six of clubs, second club on board, and it checks around to me, which you love to see. Once the small blind uh, checks in this spot, it's very, very unlikely that they have us beat. So I think that here we have the green light to go for value and protection. I bet 11.5K. Small by now folds, hijack calls, and the river is the seven of spades. The opponent checks, and this board is now definitely a little bit annoying. Uh, there's 5X out there in the form of maybe 5-6, five, 7-5 uh, suited, 5-4 suited, perhaps. It's hard to see something like anything like worse than a gutter 5 getting here, but maybe ace-5 suited is out there too and, and find its, finds its way into this river card. I think in retrospect, uh, I kind of like a check back, but in game, I just decided that the opponent's really likely to have a pocket pair, eights or nines, really likely to have uh, you know, a worse 10 than me, very unlikely to have a better 10 than me, very unlikely to have two pair. So I do decide to just jam for his 21K, which is another kind of valid reason to go for here is that he just doesn't have that much behind. However, uh, he snaps <laughs> with 5-4 offsuit. So I might be giving him a little too little 5X in his range um, and might have kind of owned myself here with trying to go thin. But if you don't really get called by a better hand when you're value betting like ever, then you're probably not value betting thin enough. So kind of got to shrug this one off and uh, move on with a little bit less in my stack. 66K or so in my stack now, under the gun opens up to 2.5K. I'm in the big one with king, queen, offsuit and call. The flop comes out jack, eight, five, all diamonds and I have the king of diamonds in hand. So when I check and he bets 3K, it's a very easy continue. Just a question of whether we want to check raise or check call. I think given I have two overs and a couple backdoors going on, I would rather just call, not stuff in a bunch of money here and maybe get him to jam and really hate my life. So uh, just make the call and on the turn five of spades, I check and he now bets 12K. Against this upsizing, I think that opponent is really representing a lot of hands that are kind of crushing us. And at this point, there's only one card to come. I think it's relatively unlikely that we hit one pair and just like make more money and have it be good. So I don't think there's like a ton of implied odds here either. I end up just folding. Don't love it. Don't hate it. Blinds now at 800, 1600, 1600, 58K in the stack and early position limps in small blind calls as well. And I'm in the big one with King 10 offsuit and make the call. Well, I guess I make the check. Technically, the flop comes out, four deuce, deuce, rainbow, small blind checks, and I decide to stab for 2K. Don't really think this is necessary uh, after the fact, after doing more studying. I think this is uh, probably, yes, it's technically my board in some ways because I can have a deuce and probably nobody else can. Maybe the small blind can have a few, but I just don't think this is going to work out too well. Too often, early position, 
can still limp in with like a bunch of pairs that are over a four. Early position does call and Spotlight now makes it 7K, which is the second time in a row he's check raised me on a board that I don't feel like is his. So I just kind of take it to the streets and decide to call and see what he does. However, I kind of forgot that early position is still a factor in this hand and early position calls too. However, I do think he almost always now has a very weak over pair, um, whereas I still have every two in my range when I call here. The turn also now comes a three. So I also have six, five in range, ace five in range. Uh, yeah, very interesting board. Small boy now checks, which is what I was expecting. I thought he would give up a lot here. And I decided to make a pretty committing looking bet, even though I'm not necessarily committed with this holding. I bet 17K. I really want to blast early position off of a hand like pocket sixes uh, if I can here. Not sure if this is going to work, but uh, it does end up working in this spot. Both of them fold, so sometimes taking it to the street works. I, I don't really advocate how I played this hand now today, but I think probably the weakest part of this hand was the flop stab uh, rather than continuing against it. 70k now in my stack, under the gun opens to 3.5k. I'm in middle position with ace four of clubs and I decide to three bet to 12k. Folds around to him and he makes the call and the flop comes out. Ace six five all diamonds. He open jams for 40k. <laughs> so this is really awkward and it's a kind of spot where you kind of have to know your opponent. Some opponents will just never have worse here. Some opponents will never have better here. So uh, yeah, it's kind of just a matter of having paid attention to the table thus far. I really don't feel like this player has worse than an ace. And when they don't have worse than an ace and I have one of the weakest aces possible, it's just going to be a fold. I, I do tank fold and he shows me the ace of hearts telling me he was afraid of a pocket pair with a diamond, which is pretty interesting because I think that a pocket pair with a diamond is like just about getting the right price here anyway. So I'm not convinced this jam accomplishes a whole lot. He got me to fold a hand that was absolutely dominated by him. And I might just end up calling off with the hands that have equity anyway. But that's how people approach poker sometimes. And that's part of why poker is profitable is people kind of making these reactive sorts of actions that are probably not going to be that great in the long run. But we're still chipping down here. So 56K in the stack now and middle position limps in. I'm in the hijack with black pocket eights and I bump it up to 5K. Middle position now calls and the flop comes 10, seven, five, two hearts. He leads for 15K and this is just the trip of everybody leading. Uh, I'm wondering if I should just jam here because there are so many draws. There's not a lot of turn cards we really wanna see. Even if he just has over cards, we don't really love this spot. But I decided to just call uh, instead of jamming. I was kind of nervous about stuffing it in against a 10x sort of hand. But as you know, as we see here, the turn rolls off the ace of spades and he now jams covering me. So it's just like a really gross spot where we've stuffed in way too many blinds and we still didn't even get to realize all of our equity on a board where a lot of times we weren't going to be able to call a turn jam. So that's pretty problematic. That's why I think flop is probably either a, just a fold if we really think his range is super tight uh, or a jam to get it in against flush draws. In this next hand, 1.5K, 3K, 3K blinds now. Uh, it, we've sort of taken a few levels off, not really much going on. 30K in the stack, so pretty short here. And the cutoff open jam is 23K. I'm in the big blind with black pocket fours. And seeing as this is under eight big blinds, this is gonna be a call off. That's what I do. And he has ace nine off to the board is king five, five, deuce, 10. So never a big sweat, although those over cards were always live. Technically, he could have hit the king as well to counterfeit us. So that's a somewhat annoying part of this board. But besides that, it was a pretty, pretty easy one there. And we get to chip up 65K in the stack now over 20 blinds in the same orbit and low jack open jams 51.5K. I'm in the button with pocket nines. And while I don't love these spots because I think that a lot of times you shouldn't really be stuffing in a ton of money with the mid pairs, uh, 17 blinds, 18 blinds, whatever this is. However, I've seen people open jamming like pretty big stacks when they really didn't have to do it and having weaker hands than they probably should. So I think calling off here is pretty normal. He actually has pocket fours himself. So pretty nice spot. We end up just getting a fairly clean run out, no, no major sweats happening and chipping up once again, very fortunate to get like an almost double and then an almost double that same orbit to be now back up to 115K, which is pretty much my peak stack. I'm now under the gun with pocket jacks and I make it 6.5K. The big mind who seems like a competent player and has a 400K stack makes the call. Flop comes out, queen four deuce rainbow. He checks, definitely gonna be betting pretty much my range on this board and this hand is no different. I can get called by everywhere's pocket pair, a four, 
four, a deuce, uh, some gut shots and so on. Maybe even some ace highs that aren't a gut shot as well. So I bet 5K and he makes the call. Turn is the four of clubs, second club on board. You don't love this because a good amount of his continuing range on the flop will contain a four. So when he checks, I decide to check it back, which I'll do with a good amount of my range. And this hand in particular does pretty well as a check. The river is the 10 of clubs, which is third club down on board and he checks. I'm torn since I, I'm definitely potentially still able to target pocket pairs and I don't think a queen's going to check the river that much. Um, but on this board, I'm a little bit less sure because of how coordinated it is. So I decide to just check it back. I actually get shown king three offsuit with one club, one spade. I mean, I don't exactly know what's going on in this hand, but I, I think the flop continues a little bit a little bit weak, probably not enough equity, although I kind of get what they're trying to accomplish given that, you know, they have cards that wrap around the three on the board. But yeah, I mean, sometimes one back door just isn't enough, you know? And by the way, uh, the next sort of thing that I have in my notes here is it's not actually a real spot, but I, I look down at my hand and it looks pretty clearly like the ace of spades is marked with a nail indentation. I actually watched a lot more of the footage back and there are many cards that have these nail indentations in them. It's not just the ace of spades, so I don't think anyone's cheating. I just kind of want to make a reminder to do your best to stay safe out there on the tables, like examine your cards, make sure that they're not obviously marked in any way. You know, it's probably unlikely somebody's making obvious marks to try to catch anything looking across the table at your hand, but you never know. And I, I just kind of try to remind myself to Stay vigilant. All right, so on what's likely to be the last break of the night, I have like 120K, which is a bit under average. There's something like 80 players left from the 282 in this flight. 34 make the money and make day two. So uh, getting down to it, I guess all the other flights ended um, around level 16, 17. So we're very likely to end in level 16. And uh, hopefully we can, hopefully we can dead it. Get it done. I'm not used to being below average with this many chips. It feels very weird. Uh, a couple flying levels missing, perhaps, but feeling pretty okay about my play for the most part, and uh, hopefully we can get her done. In this next hand, blinds are up to 2K, 4K, 4K, and I have 120K in my stack. Good for 30 big blinds. Small bind limps in. I'm in the big blind with nine through offsuit and I check it. Could definitely stab here. Uh, just try to get him to fold some dominating nine X or three X hands, but decided to just check this one back. Flop comes 10, 10, nine. So we make a pair. He checks and I want to bet here just to get value from straight draws, from over cards, from just like equity denial, from maybe like an ace X holding. So I bet 4k and he makes the call turn is the ace of hearts and while i do think that some ace high will continue i think a good amount of ace high will either raise pre or just fold on the flop so i'm not too concerned about it but i also think that it's a little hard to get value now from too much else so when he checks i decide to check it back he now revers the king of diamonds and he bets 8k it's kind of hard to see what hands he's representing i i mean queen jack is out there king jack king queen are out there but besides that and maybe the occasional ace high i guess he could slow play a 10 and not check raise but given how coordinated the flop was i i think that will usually check raise flop i'm just kind of struggling to put him on a hand and there are plenty of straight draws that did just completely brick so i put in the call not that happy about it it's king eight of spades which is um again like probably an okay defend on the flop but i wasn't really anticipating so that makes my call probably pretty bad in retrospect 100k in the stack now 25 bigs i'm in middle position with king nine of hearts and make it 8k the big blind who is a short stack defends and the flop comes jack 10 three two tone he checks i put out a c bet of 5k which which actually I could probably just go totally min here to 4k but I think this is fine turn is a 10 of hearts and he now lead jams for 40k yeah I mean we make a flush so <laughs> what do you want to do I snap it in there and he has 10 six of diamonds so absolute action river uh excuse me action turn card here where he makes trips and I make a flush not out of the woods yet as any board pairing card uh would give him the best hand as well as any six but the river's the five of clubs and we just hold uh, to win a really important pot here and get back up out of the muck here to to 150k now at the 3k 6k 6k level small blind limps in i'm in the big blind with seven five of clubs and decide to check flop comes queen jack four 
rainbow. And when he checks, I decided to just stab for 6K. This hand isn't really anything yet, but has a good amount of backdoor potential. And he check raises to 21K. We're not really deep enough to float with backdoors only here. So I just throw it into the muck. Uh, I do think there are a lot of good hands he can have here, and there's not so many draws that I feel like I'm just straight up getting owned by uh, stabbing and then folding. 132k in the stack now, Button, who's a big stack, makes it 16k. Pretty big sizing. I'm on the Button with King Nine of Spades, and I just go all in. I think this is probably too close. Uh, it's probably a little too weak. We probably want slightly stronger King X hands like King Queen, King Jack suited, King Queen offsuit, King Nine suited. Yeah, it's got some good properties, and if the opponent's like really active, it's probably okay but I don't really love it without that read. In the very next hand, there's an open in middle position, low jack jams for 80 to 90K. We're in the cutoff and have pocket sevens, which is like on the surface, a really pretty hand, but kind of annoying fold. I just don't think we are doing well against this range. Overall, we're mostly flipping or dominated. There are a few hands that we probably crush or that we are, you know, better than a flip against, so to say, but I just end up letting it go and on to the next one. Blinds are now up to 5k, 10k, 10k, which relative to the start of the day is pretty nuts. Um, low jack opens the 20k. I'm in the small blind with ace 10 offsuit and I decide to jam in my 116k stack. I uh, don't love this spot ever. It's just like feels like you're going to get snapped. You don't have a ton of fold equity, but this hand is also ahead of a lot of the hands that the opponent is opening. So you kind of just have to do it. Ends up actually getting through, which is pretty surprising. A nice way to pick up more than 40K in the stack here. And in the very next hand now, I open jam on the button with pocket nines for about 160K. It gets through once again. So a few orbits later, I've sort of chipped back down again, 148K on the stack, and I'm in the cutoff with King Deuce of Spades, open it up to 20K. Big blind defends, and the flop comes out King 10-6 with one spade. Not a bad one. Top pair is always a little bit easier to navigate than uh, some of these air type holdings. Opponent also check calls 13K, so happy to see that. They can easily continue with a 10 or a six and plenty of straight draws. The turn is now in line of spades, second spade on board, but my opponent lead jams all in for 67K. This is kind of annoying. On the surface, yes, we have top pair and we've just turned a flush draw, so it's probably never a fold, but this card brings in many of the straight draws, and I don't think a lot of opponents will find, uh, you know, like a 9x holding with a straight draw and turn it into a bluff. Like, I think that's going to be super rare. So we're kind of left with like hands that came in or are just a better holding than ours and want to get protection on this card, worried that I'll just check back. So, you know, with, with all those things being true, I don't really love it, but I do decide to call off. I think if I didn't have the flush draw, I probably wouldn't call here. <laughs> Crazily enough, uh, I do call and he actually just has ace five of spades, which is kind of wild to me because it's just super hard to float this flop and then get a turn card that you like against the preflop aggressor out of the big blind. He finds one and he's still not in incredible shape. We still have to dodge the river though. The flush draw that allowed us to make the call is not one that we want to come in anymore, but the river is the five of hearts, giving my opponent a weaker pair than mine and we hold to stack a player and and chip up quite a bit. 240k in the stack now, and we're actually seven handed. It's now relevant because there are 39 players left and about 33 make day two from this flight. Under the gun, open jams for 121k in this hand and middle position, re-jams for 175k. I have tens in the cutoff and these spots kind of suck. Both players can have hands that are worse than mine, but not a lot worse than mine. And it's pretty close to the bubble now to the point where you think that under the guns range is a little bit tighter. Middle positions range should be significantly tighter after there's already a jam in front of them other than you know, like if we're comparing this to a non bubble spot and yeah, it's not the exact bubble. We still have a ways to go several eliminations, but given that we're only six eliminations away, I think most players will be aware of this and shorter stacks shouldn't be just stuffing it in. Uh, super annoying. I, I think that in the moment I should get it in, but I ended up just folding. It's definitely the cusp hand. Uh, I think that nines is a pretty good fold and eights is like a very clear fold. Uh, but tens probably just has to be it. I was definitely going with jacks, but tens I find the fold. I ended up getting to feel kind of stupid because under the gun has sixes and uh, under, uh, middle position has ace king suited. Board rolls out queen, jack, jack, three, nine. So I get to feel extra stupid given that I would have won the pot and chipped up basically more than uh, 
more than a double here. But instead, I uh, I just save myself from a tricky bubble spot and move on to the next hand. I'm up a little bit here, so I've probably won a hand that I just opened. 265k in the stack and 37 players are left. I'm in the hijack with pocket threes, bump it up to 20k. Big blind just makes the call and covers me by about 100k. Flop comes king, five, deuce, two spades. He checks. I put in a c-bet for 20k, which I'll do with a very high proportion of my range. He makes the call. Turn is the six of clubs, and I'm already thinking about whether I can maybe start to blast off here. It's a board that I'm going to do pretty well on, but I'm kind of back and forth given that there are two flush draws. However, he thwarts all plans and thoughts here by leading for 25k. This is kind of like my board. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. And I block the, the biggest hand that's value that would want to lead for three suited. So it doesn't seem to make a ton of sense to me. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I can ever fold here, but it seems like I should definitely call. I do make the call. I have a lot of backup equity here and as some of it comes. So the river's the three of diamonds. I river a set and he now leads for 70K. It's hard to see what specifically beats me besides four three suited, which is just one combo now, or pocket sixes, which is a turned set. Maybe a couple other sets could play this way, but you certainly wouldn't give him full combinations for it. It's hard to give him full combinations even of pocket sixes actually. So even though I don't love this, when every flush draw breaks, and I'm having trouble making sense of what his value hands are. I do put in the call and he does in fact have pocket sixes. So very unfortunate one to lose here near the bubble. Uh, but what can you really do? Sometimes you just got to live and die by the sword. 150K in the stack now getting very short. Still 37 left and the button opens to 22K. I'm in the big mine with king eight offsuit and I make the call. I think this could actually just be a fold near the bubble. This hand's not going to play all that great, but I make the call and the flop comes king seven, six, kind of bailing me out here. Top pair. But if the puck gets bigger, it's going to be a little bit precarious. I check my opponent bets 17K and I very happily just call. I think check raising would be a little bit of a mistake here. Probably only get it in against better and very strong draws. Turn is the six of spades, which is a card that probably favors my range a bit over my opponents, but still don't think leading makes a ton of sense. And certainly not with this combo. I decide to check once again and my opponent now bets 37K. Again, getting a little bit precarious here with how much we have to put in. I do end up making the call, however, and the river comes the jack of hearts, breaking the flush draw, breaking the straight draws, kind of have to feel pretty good about this. However, if he bets all in, it's gonna be pretty gross to call off for my tournament life near the bubble. I check and thankfully my opponent just checks it back. So most of the time I'm just gonna win this hand and that's what happens here. I get a much needed pot well near the bubble and we end up hand for hand with 35 players left. We go to the final break with a stack of about 229K. All right, now we're on the last break of the night for real because we're on the stone bubble. There's no way we play a two hour bubble. Uh, I think I'm finally above average, but not by tons. No, I'm still below average, Never mind. Uh, but there's 35 left, 34 make it, and um, we're pretty close to average at like 20 some big blinds coming back, I think. So I'm gonna try to spin it, but not much else to say. Let's go. But very soon after coming back from that break to the 6K, 12K, 12K level, we end up putting chips in the bag and making the money. Going into this tournament, it had been a while since I'd put chips in any bag, so it felt pretty good, even though it kind of felt like if a couple different spots had gone differently, I could have backed a lot more. That's probably pretty much always gonna be true in a tournament, unless you just totally sun run, so hard to be upset. End up having a, a pretty nice day off the following day, which maybe I'll cover here or maybe in the next video, but stay tuned for my day two video. I promise it will take less time to come out than this one did.